Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Pastor Don Weekly Podcast Show. I want to thank you so very much for joining me, listening to my weekly devotional every single week. We're on iHeart, Spotify, and what did you mention, uh, Don? Uh, we're on the uh, Podbean cast. Which oh, is I haven't really heard of that, yeah. so thank you for doing yes, that. Yes. You did it. <laughs> yeah, so it's just kind of like Spreaker on a different platform. Hey, that's awesome, man. Now we're on Spre- we're on YouTube. We are Everywhere. in many different places, so there's no excuse <laughs> where you cannot pick up the Pastor Don Weekly Podcast Show. Each and every week, I bring you a, um, a, a teaching from God's Word in order to build you up in Christ. Amen. But before I start up my opening remarks, I've already said hi to Don. I want to say hi again. How are you today, my friend? I'm doing great. Uh, sunny days have to start to come, but they say we're having a storm coming oh, up. Oh, huge one. Wednesday, Wednesday and Wednesday. Saturday is supposed yeah. to be a big rain. How are you feeling? I'm, feel- I'm feeling great. Well, I'm not feeling great, actually, because the cold really affects me really, really mm-hmm. bad. And we are encircled with snow, on all- even on the oh hills. Oh, my gosh. It's even on the hills. Beautiful. Yeah. Gosh, gosh it's gosh, gorgeous. Beautiful. I mean, it's, it's beautiful to a sense to, to where you're like, ah! No, I know. I know. I I mean, I'll tell you, the view is beautiful, but I don't feel great for the people that's got to drive in that place. It is really tough. Anyway, let me get started on my opening thoughts. You know, last week I introduced a Christian term called discipleship. Now, a disciple of Jesus is basically a follower of Jesus. So anyone who has put their faith in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins is what they call a follower of Christ. But are you and, and I truly following Jesus every day? You know, we have said that we want 2019. My theme for this year is that we want it to, number one, be our best year ever. Yes. And the only way, in my opinion, and Donovan's opinion, that we can accomplish that is by living a righteous life for God. That means that we live each and every day that God blesses us with for Him. And that is what discipleship is all about. As I mentioned last week from Luke 14, Jesus taught us that in order to be His disciples... We need to put him first above all relationships, including our own relationship. We must also realize that following him will bring persecution from the world to our lives. Jesus made that clear in his word. Today, we're going to take a closer look at the basic requirements of being a disciple of Jesus. So, first of all, in order to be a disciple of Christ, you must be a committed Christian. That's the number one priority. Let me explain what a committed Christian is all about. There are many people willing and even anxious to follow Jesus, but unfortunately they want to follow Jesus on their own terms. In other words, they're all in and living for God, providing that the cost is not too high or the demands from God on them are not so great. These so-called followers are willing to participate in some Christian things, like going to church periodically, praying occasionally, singing praise songs, but their hearts are really not committed to Christ. In a sense, they're coming along for the ride, but they're not willing to give up everything in their lives, as Luke 14 teaches us, that might conflict with their normal activities. You know, it's funny that the people in Jesus' day is not that much different than the people of today. Back in Jesus' day, you know, as long as Jesus was doing his miracles, he was feeding them for free, he was healing them, hey, they were okay with the Jesus thing. Well, the same holds true for churchgoers today. As long as Jesus is solving their money problems, solving their relationship problems, solving their health problems, hey, they're okay with this Jesus thing. But when their prayers are not answered as they wish, or they feel or they feel that Jesus is asking too much from their Sorry. lives, they're no longer willing or wanting to follow Christ. These large crowds of Jesus' day were casual followers and not committed believers. And only committed followers can be his true disciples. You know, a committed follower puts their, hand, puts their lives in God's hands. A committed follower allows God to lead them in all things, even when we're not sure where that will take us. That's what the definition of faith is all about. A committed Christian is one that puts God first over everything else in life and trusts the Lord with everything. A committed disciple is one that's all in for Jesus with no turning back. Now, now how does that sound to us today? How does that sound to you, Donovan? All in. Pouring all your chips in the middle of the the table for Christ. Risky. It's risky. Mm -hmm. It's scary. Because that means your control has been replaced by God's control in your life. 
Now, you might be thinking, well, Pastor, that's a steep high price to pay. But if you really think about it truly in your heart, it really isn't. I mean, look at what Jesus gave up. He gave up everything for us to be able to have eternal life yes. with him. This life is so temporal. We look at this life as a, a big deal. But in the grand scheme of things, Donovan, this is like 70, 80 years of eternity forever type thing. It's mm -hmm. a small, this sacrifice that God's asking from us is small in comparison to the enormous gain based on Jesus' sacrifice for us. But this is the key to my opening remarks. The key in order to be a disciple of Jesus, you and I must calculate the cost of your commitment. Calculate the cost of this commitment. Let me explain what I mean with this simple il illustration. I want you to check this out, Donovan. Mm -hmm. Suppose I had a desire to clout my, Mount Everest. Now, first of all, this is definitely an example. Because yeah. <laughs> I have no interest in climbing Mount Everest, and I'm not sure why anybody would. Yeah. What to climb my... I mean, I just heard of guys that was climbing Mount Everest in the wintertime. I mean, why... What... Never mind. <laughs> Let's just say, though, for my illustration, that you have this interest in climbing Mount Everest. But suppose that I... If I did have the desire to climb Mount Everest, we recognize the fact that it's going to cost about $70,000 in gear, clothing supplies, private instructions, and not other necessary things in order to do it. And I just don't have that kind of money. So suppose a wealthy businessman heard of my desire and offered to pay for the entire expedition. In other words, not one dime coming from me. He would buy all the expensive clothing. He would buy all the expensive gear. He would pay for my transportation, the guides, and the training. It would be totally free for me. Mm -hmm. But if I accept this free offer... I would have to commit myself to months and months of difficult training and arduous effort. I must dedicate my time completely in preparing for this climb. It, would it could even cost me my very life because many strong climbers still draw, die trying to climb Mount Everest. Mm -hmm. The expedition was completely free. This wealthy businessman paid for it all, and yet it was very costly in time and effort. It is changing your desires and perspectives from one life to a completely new adventure. Well, that's the same idea of, of turning your life over to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Jesus did it all. He paid the price completely. Cost us nothing. But a changed life is a true commitment to the Christian life in following God in everything that we do. I want to go back to Luke 14. I want to take a look at verses 28 to 33. Let me read that to you. Luke 14, starting in verse 28. It says this, Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Will he not first sit down and estimate the cost to see if he has enough money to complete it? For if he lays the foundation and is not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule him, saying, This fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Will he not first sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000? Mm -hmm. Verse 32, if he is not able, he will send a delegation while the other is still a long way off and will ask for terms of peace. Verse 33, in the same way, any of you who does not give up everything he has cannot be my disciple. Think about it, Donovan. In anything we do in life, it is imperative to count the costs before starting a project or plan an event. Mm -hmm. Now, I was thinking about you when I wrote this, you know, about counting the costs. I guarantee you, before mm -hmm. you did the renovations on your house, mm -hmm. in regards to the outside, you know, the, you know, the, the landscape you're going to be doing, the inside of your house, I guarantee you, before you even started that project, you counted the cost of what it's going to cost you. Materials, labor, time, feasibility. And feasibility, everything, didn't you? Yeah. Did. Before I you did. actually started. That's smart. Mm -hmm. You don't go into a project, you know, without counting the cost first. Mm -hmm. That's what life is all about. You always want to make sure that you understand everything that is involved before you go full bore into it. In other words, it is imperative to know and understand all the rules completely before playing the game. If you don't, Guess what, folks? 
the results will be disastrous. Mm. I gotta tell you the story. Don, you gotta listen to this. You'll enjoy this story. It's a cute story about a man who was sitting in a chair of a tattoo parlor in Harlem, New York. He wanted to express his love for his wife, Roberta, by getting her name tattooed on his arm. Of course, it's for Valentine's Day, which is this week. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are interested in getting tattoos of their loved one. He was over halfway through the procedure when he asked the artist, how much will this tattoo cost? Mm -hmm. The artist replied, it will cost you $100. The man pulled out his wallet and noticed that he had only $80 cash with him. The artist stopped immediately with the tattoo, took the $80, and told the man to leave. The man went home and got in a huge fight with his wife, Roberta, when she noticed that his new tattoo read, I love Robert. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you don't calculate the cost first. You know, I'm going to talk a little bit more about calculating the cost and being a disciple for Jesus in more detail next week. What I want you all to remember is that being a disciple of Jesus is not easy. But let me tell you, it is extremely rewarding. There are many sacrifices that we need to make in getting from our sinful habits and living exclusively for God's Word. But the benefits are not only out of this world, but it's also part of this world mm -hmm. in peace, joy, and love. Yes. There is no better life to live than the one to live for Jesus every day, no matter the cost and Donovan, you and I both know the old saying, you get what you pay for. Yeah. When you pay the price of the sacrifice from this world, the benefits from God are priceless. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we again thank you so much for your word. Lord, we need to realize that in order to be a true follower of you, we must be committed. We cannot go through the motions of being a Christian. We need to be on fire for you and wanting to live our lives for you. But Lord, we also understand that there is a cost to commitment. But the cost is minimal in comparison to the awesome blessings of living for you each and every day. As we continue to live in 2019, Lord, give us the strength to live completely for you. The temptations are out there in this world. Sin is everywhere. But you, Lord, are much bigger and more powerful than anything in this world. Lord, we submit it all to you and give you glory. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Folks, I hope you enjoyed my opening monologue as we continue our look on how to be a disciple for Jesus. Do you realize that 2019 is almost one-sixth over? I mean, it seems like we just, we just celebrated Christmas yesterday. Mm -hmm. Time flies so fast. We cannot delay our decision to live each day. We want this to be the best year, but we can't keep delaying the idea of committing each day to the Lord. Discipleship is a process. But if you don't start now, you may never start, and 2019 will be just like 2018 and the years prior. Now next week we will continue our look at counting the cost of discipleship in our lives. Trust me folks, you don't want to miss it. As I say every week, again I want to thank you all so very much for being a part of Reflections Ministries uh, Facebook page. I hope you're continuing to read my daily devotionals as we are still fighting with Facebook all the time oh, and trying to get it shared with all the different groups and all the different people. We are blessed. We're getting, coming close to almost 3,200 followers, which is a blessing. And I thank you so much. We get almost, almost 75 to 80 shares a day, which That's is it. a blessing, That's including right. the podcast, right. including the memes and the devotion. So thank you. Thank you for sharing it. Thank you for enjoying it. And continue to um, invite family and friends to like the page. If you've never checked it out, this is the first time you're listening to this show, it is Reflections Ministries Facebook page. Check it out. We've got almost two years worth of material in there. I think mm -hmm. you will like it. And if you do, like it, follow it, and then, of course, share it with family and friends. I say this frequently. I want to repeat it again this morning. I continuously pray that these podcasts are building you up in Christ, and they're a blessing to you and your family. Discipleship is very, very important. It is the way that God wants us to live, not only for the commitment to Him, because the abundant life only comes through that commitment. I hope you enjoyed this opening monologue. God bless you, and God bless your family. Yeah, that, that, that was really uh, something to think about, because you know, really a lot of people sometimes do stuff, and they don't research the cost. Oh, that's so true. 
Oh and my like, gosh. Or, or, or like we have those of us that have children. We know that our kids sometimes don't think everything through and they put themselves in situations that were not beneficial to them or maybe even to the family, you yeah. know, in the in the wrong place at the wrong time. You know, it's funny when I when I was uh, in my business world and, you know, prior to 2008, we were building I was uh, my team and I were building a number of different resorts and a, a lot of different mm -hmm. um, buildings all over the world. We probably had about six, seven projects going at one time. I didn't calculate the cost of the fact that the banks were stopped lending. And that's what happened during the recession. Right. So I missed that. And because of that lack of um, smartness mm -hmm. or you know, intuitiveness, mm -hmm. I lost it all. Right. So calculating the cost, every angle that's involved in a project, mm -hmm. you have to make sure that you understand it and that you're willing to be able to pay that cost and make sure it's, it's, a, it's a value to you. It's, yeah. a value to it, you. it's kind of funny. Um... I teach my nephews and my nieces, at least I try to teach them, but their, their parents are like, oh, that's a waste of time. One thing that uh, I teach them, trip, the game of chess. Oh, I love the game of chess. You know, because mm -hmm. think about it. Not, only, it's it's, not only does it teach a strategy, mm -hmm. but it also teaches you before you make any move. A pawn in a chess game is a very powerful piece if you think. That's true. It's the small, smallest piece most insignificant piece, piece, but it does have power. It, it can be very powerful because you've got, yes. to out, you, you've got to think ahead of how to use that pawn. Absolutely. Which goes back to kind of what you were saying. And if more people would, I think, if more people would learn the game of chess and how to do it. I mean, every piece that I use, I, I'm, a, I'm a, def, a defensive player when it comes to chess. Mm -hmm. I like to backpedal on I didn't know you played chess. Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Yes. When are we going to play? <laughs> I haven't played chess in 20 years. Oh, I yeah. used to be part of a yeah. chess team long, long, oh, long you're time a ago. Okay, oh, gotcha. please. <laughs> I used to have a, a, a chess move in six moves. Mm -hmm. About 60, 70% of the time, I could get checkmate in six moves. Right. But right. I couldn't get checkmate probably at all right. against you. I probably well, no, I'm a different player because, been a while. I, because I would play against players like you that do it in six. Yeah. So I had to learn to the get out moves. of the trap. The defensive moves, trap. exactly. And, uh, it's just, you know, and, and this sermon uh, today, this devotional today, actually reminds me of chess yeah. and how um, I would try to explain to my nephews and nieces, anybody that wanted to play, in chess you have to think of mm -hmm. all the ramifications that's going to happen with that piece before you move it or that's it right. could be deadly. That's right. And so and it is really true, and I hear a lot of people and Christians saying, "Well, gosh, that's a that's a high price to pay to be a Christian." And I think about it. Well, what's the alternative? The alternative is living in your sin. The alternative is living for your own sinful desires. The alternative that, is being with God. Yeah, that's better. Well, <laughs> I, again, I, I just I guess I just don't see that as better when the promises of commitment to Christ is joy, peace, and hope, and love, mm -hmm. and the and the benefits of living in sin is. Depression, hopelessness, and discouragement, and despair. Right? And despair. I just don't see where the where the payoff is for the sin. <laughs> but you know, a lot of people struggle with that because they want to be their own person, mm -hmm. and they don't want to be dedic uh, um, dictated by what God teaches. Not realizing that we don't know what's best for our lives, but God, God does. does. He's already seen your life. He knows how you're going to, what you're going to wear tomorrow, what you're going to mm -hmm. eat tomorrow, when you're going to die. He knows oh, it all. He knows you and I better than we know ourselves. He knows what's best for us. We Amen. need to commit to him. The price is not high. Trust me, folks. The price is right yeah. because God's plan for us is so much better. You know, and, and, and you say the price is right. I mean, what is he asking? Us, us to love, number one, love him above mm -hmm. all, all else. And number two, love each other. And, and, then, much we love our and then number three, be obedient to his word. That's it. That's all there is to it. You just got to do Simple. those. And it's not that hard because once you live that life, the benefits are just out of this world. I mean, I, I, again, I've said this so many times. I'll say it again. From a guy who's been both sides—a mm -hmm. millionaire and a not a, <laughs> and a and not a millionaire mm -hmm. type thing—the life is so much better. It is living for Christ and being not as wealthy than living outside of Christ and having money. So again, it's so it's such a great thing to commit the uh, calculate the cost. But I don't want everyone to think I'm telling you, you're getting a bargain by committing your life to the Lord. Right. <laughs> right. Sure. Last week we um, uh, and, and it got a little bit. Uh, it was interesting. Some of the comments I saw in regards to the uh, discussions that we had in regard. We're starting a, a, a little series in regard to looking at some of the sins uh, uh, in, in a progressive world. Of the, uh, basically, that's attracting the attention, you know, a lot in 2019, and taking a look at how the Bible talks about it uh, in today's world. I mean, what does the Bible say about it? 
you know, a couple of weeks ago, we started looking at, first of all, the sin of abortion, especially because of the new New York law mm -hmm. and other uh, state laws that are basically in, in Virginia and others that are talking about third trimester abortions, which, you know, I really Insane. struggle struggle with that Insane. beyond measure. But so we discussed that a couple of weeks ago. Well, last week we uh, took a take a look. We started to take a look at what we call the sin of homosexuality. And of course, I said it about 15 times last week, and I guess they didn't. Most a lot of people did not hear this part about. We're not here to condemn any right. human being. We're not condemning any woman or man who agreed to have an abortion uh, against a child. We're not condemning a person that's gay or lesbian or any a homosexual. It's not about the person. It's never about the person. You know why it's not about the person, Donovan? Why? Because I sin too. Right. Is my That's sin, of, let's say my sin of anger or lust or whatever, any better or worse in God's eyes than your sin of homosexuality? The answer is no. A sin, a sin is a sin. So it's never about the person. But it is about the sin. And what you need to understand is you, we need to understand how God sees it because there's no chance of repentance, no chance of forgiveness if we don't see it as a sin. If we just see it as a lifestyle that's just the way it is, then we'll never understand how we can be forgiven by God for that particular sin. Now last week what I did is I, I gave you a number of verses. Uh, most specifically in the Old Testament, in the book of Leviticus, that basically talks about how God sees the sin of homosexuality. And it's not, it's not a, a mystery. Of course, God sees homosexuality as a sin. It's an abomination in his eyes. Probably the most, um, probably the most famous um, verses or the fam most famous story in the Old Testament, besides the, the activities before the flood, is probably Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. You know, you look at Genesis 19, it talks about the angel coming in to try to rescue Lot and his family. And then you read about the um, people outside his door wanting to have sexual relations the with family. the angels. Yeah. And it's like, you know, again, showing again this homosexuality was so rampant even in the days of Abraham and Lot. And things really have not changed in today's world. A sin was a sin. Uh, homosexuality was a sin back in those days. Homosexuality is a sin today. Mm -hmm. But here's what, what I want to talk about today. And I want to get in a discussion here with, with Donovan on this is the idea of what causes homosexuality? Now, if you ask most people, especially people that are gay or are lesbian, they would say that they were born that way. Okay. They would say that they were born with a, <clears throat> a gene or something that caused them to be homosexual even at birth. And I struggled a little bit with that, and I, I mentioned it slightly last week, because God is very, very clear that, you know, God created us, God knew about us even before we were in the womb. God created man and woman. We gave you a couple of verses, Genesis 1.27, when it says, God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them male and female. I followed that up with Genesis 5.2 that said, when God created man, he made him in the likeness of God. He created them male and female and blessed them. Well, if you and I, male and female, are created in his likeness, and you're saying that God created you with a gene of homosexuality, that means his likeness is to that gene. That tells me that he will create you in a way that, that promotes sin. Well, God is, all, is, all, is completely against sin. God cannot do that. It's against his nature. It's against his image. God can't say on one point that he created you and me in his image and then give you, you know, this gene that caused you to be homosexual without any choice mm -hmm. whatsoever. It's impossible. That goes against the nature of the Lord. So the idea when people say that uh, it's uh, caused at birth, I, I, I struggle with that quite a bit because I know what God teaches in regards to his creation of us. Mm -hmm. So if that's not the case, and this is where I want to kind of get Donovan's uh, opinion on this, then how, what causes the sin of homosexuality. Now, I tried to get some uh, data in regards to how it seems like the last 15, 20 years, the idea of homosexuality has become more publicized, more rampant, more, um, you know, you hear more about it. You know, I, I don't know about you. I mean, of course, I'm an older individual. Mm -hmm. You know, 50, 60 years ago, you rarely heard about most men or women coming out as being gay. Absolutely. But that doesn't mean that they weren't. It just mm -hmm. means that it was not, um, it was not, uh, uh, 
it was kept in secret. Yeah, it was a big words. deal. I mean, you, know, yeah. you remember in high school, there was always that guy that you're kind of like, yeah. But you know, everybody because knows it was, him. Yeah. And also because that it was, um, it, it was deemed very, very negative, taboo. right? Very taboo. taboo, exactly. So people, if they were homosexual, they stayed in the closet. They right. stayed behind, not wanting to publicize it to get persecuted. Mm -hmm. So we don't. There is no data because a lot of people never came out of the closet to be able to express that they were mm -hmm. homosexual. But today, with the more liberal laws, greater tolerance, acceptance, and approval, um, I mean, we look at same-sex marriages, God, that's been um, already promoted in mm -hmm. today, so, um, uh, homosexuality in the military, right. that's right. also um, um, in today's world. Politics. In politics, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, basically, homosexuality has turned the corner in regards to be being revealed by people that are struggling with that. But either way, one or the other, it's still not created by God. I have to make that crystal clear because it cannot go against God's word. So what, if you had, if I had to ask you this, Donovan, if I asked you, why do you think, where do you think the idea of homosexuality, you know, how does that, how does that evolve in an individual? What would you say? I, I, you know, I, I, that's kind of hard, but I, I think it's, it's just a, a a, it's a perversion, or just it's a it's a selfish desire within yourself. It's something that you choose to, you know. It's something. Would you agree that it's a behavior? Yeah, it, it, it's your behavior. It, okay. It, it, okay uh, and, and please, everybody, don't condemn me for saying. No, no, we're condemning the sin. Yeah. Not the person. The person. Please, I'm going to continue but, to say that. But it's almost like every man's fantasy to be with multiple women. Right. You know what I mean? It's a, a desire that you have. That's a sinful a desire, sinful desire. To have that right. to have that um, relationship. It's selfish, right. sinful desire. Mm -hmm. I believe. That there's two main causes of homosexuality, and then, and this is my opinion. This is not a biblical opinion. This is my opinion, and I would say it's environment and family. Mm. Environment and family. Let me let me talk about family first. You know, unfortunately, we we said this a lot on this show. The fact that the the, the family is basically has been deteriorating oh, for the last absolutely. many years. I mean, from single family moms to maybe even no no parents at all living mm -hmm. with grandparents. You know, to uh, other things, but. I believe, from a standpoint of homosexuality, that family can cause a, homo a child to get homosexual tendencies. Maybe an overbearing parent mm -hmm. type thing. How about if a child was sexually abused by mm -hmm. a father? Died? It, it, it works on your emotions and it works uh, in your mental as well. How about an absentee parent? You know, just basically being dominated by a male parent or a female parent, you become getting those type of qualities mm -hmm. within you. So I think family plays a role in the idea of homosexuality. And, and, and I think it's, it's, it's again, not blaming the, the individual, but that's part of the behavioral patterns and learning patterns that we get as a younger child. But how about the um, environment? Yeah. Uh, raising a, a girl to be more like a tomboy right. type thing. And, and families that do that... Um, they're treating their little boys, you know, like little girls, you know, giving them dolls, whatever, not conditioning them in, in a, in a, you know, what an average, uh, a, a little, what average little boys normally do, you know, and it happens. It's part, it's part of how, how about when you're isolated, ridiculed, persecuted, peer pressure, all those things can mm. cause someone behavioral wise to basically uh, turn away from the normal means of, 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 of attraction, male or female, and turn it to, towards something else, especially if you've experienced any of those kind of conditions. So, do I believe that homosexuality is a behavior? I do. I do. do I believe it's not a gene? I do not, because the Bible doesn't teach it. But I want to say it one more time. Homosexuality is a sin, but it's a forgivable sin. It's a sin that needs repentance. It's a sin like any other sexual, immoral sin. Now, the reason why I'm saying it this way is because the next two weeks, we're going to take a look at a couple other sexually immoral sins that is very, very acceptable in society today. But what we're going to look at, are they acceptable in God's eyes? Mm. The, six, the, the, the sin of pornography. They say that one out of every three men struggle with pornography. Yeah. I don't, and I believe that's true. And we're talking about as young as middle school age mm -hmm. or even younger. And the question is, I had asked Christian men and women this subject. And they, and they say that even Christians, born-again Christians, do not believe that pornography is a sin. They just say, hey, what's the, it's a no-harm sin. But what is it in God's eyes? And then we're also going to look at another very sensitive topic, very sensitive, 
uh, that a lot of families uh, don't want to talk about in churches or in Bible studies because it affects them. And that's fornication, living with one another yeah. prior to marriage. You know, a lot of people say, hey, that, this is 2019. We're in a progressive society. That's what we got to do. We have to live together make sure we're compatible, make, you know, combine our finances. It's an ease of living. But what does God teach on right. that? What does God see in regards to that? So we're going to look at those sins in regards to uh, 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 pornography and porn fornication next week in regards to this. But I want to close a little bit on homosexuality and talk a little bit more about it. And I'm really interested in getting Donovan's opinion. Now, you got to understand mm -hmm. something, folks. I don't prep this man <laughs> on what I'm going to talk about. He knows I'm going to talk about, you know, the sins, mm -hmm. but I don't prep him on questions because, you know, that's what makes this show so great. I mean, yeah. he's on the spot. On he puts spot, me yeah. on the spot, and I, you know, we both enjoy that. But the one thing that I struggle with, and I, I really want Donovan to think about this and kind of give me his thoughts on it, you know, Christians get persecuted, and Christians get labeled as racist and other, other names yeah, by unbelievers in the world, by our stance on the sin of homosexuality. Again, if we're judging an individual because of their sin, then that's a problem. Because Matthew 7, 1 is extremely clear not to judge people. Only God has the ability to judge because we all sin. If you're going to judge somebody else on their sin, then they should be able to judge us on our own sin. Exactly. So we're not here to judge a person. But I'm telling you, in the real world out there, in this Satan-led world, sin-infested world, Christians... Christian people get ridiculed and persecuted because of their belief, the biblical belief, on, on homosexuality. But do you realize, Donovan, that the world, and especially the United States, do not persecute the Muslim religion on their stance on homosexuality? Let me give you a couple, let me give you a couple verses from the Quran that talks about homosexuality. Quran, uh, it's also known as a surah, Quran, the chapter 7, verses 80 to 84, says, For ye that practices lust on men in preference to women, you are transgressed beyond bounds, and we, and we will, uh, I, can't read, I can't even read this, and we will, oh my gosh, I'm sorry, I can't even read this. Anyways, the bottom line is it says that you will be hit with brimstones of light from the sky. So I can't even read my own writing. <laughs> Quran 4.16 says, If two men among you are guilty of lewdness, punish them both by death. Yes. Now, the question I have is, and let me give you a little bit more statistics, Don, if you <laughs> ponder. You know, I just looked at a few uh, Middle Eastern nations in regard to the punishment of a person practicing homosexuality in these countries. Mm -hmm. The worst is Saudi Arabia. Right. Saudi Arabia, if you practice homosexuality, you will be imprisoned. You will be flogged 40 times. That means the whip, just like mm -hmm. Jesus was flogged. You will be castrated. And then uh, eventually you will lead to death. Mm -hmm. But other countries, Egypt, Afghanistan, basically it's all imprisonment. Five to ten years plus a hefty fine. Iran, it's death. Homosexuality, shit, on the practicing of homosexuality. And then other countries, Omen, um, other areas I looked at, uh, Syria, and other Muslim nations, the, uh, the uh, discipline for homosexuality was mostly imprisonment. And if it was caught, or caught by one witness, imprisonment and a large fine. So the question I have for you, Donovan, mm -hmm. is, um, well, Christians in this country are absolutely persecuted for their stance on homosexuality. But now that more and more Muslims have come into this country, mm -hmm. and their laws, and their... And their um, the Bible type book or the Quran mm -hmm. is very, very succinct on, on how to deal with homosexuality. Why are they not persecuted for their views on the same thing that Christians are persecuted for theirs? Okay. Let me think before I answer here. Could it be because there are more Muslims in the world than there are Christians? Well, in, 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 in actuality... Because of the Catholic religion, there are actually more Christians in the world than Muslims. Now, you pull out the Catholics, the Roman Catholics, mm -hmm. then you're absolutely right. The okay. Muslims okay. is number one. But if you, there's almost like two and a half to three billion ca uh, Christians, including Worldwide. Catholics, mm -hmm. right. in the world, and Muslims is just a, you know just a little bit behind on yeah. that okay. type thing. So I'm, I'm not sure if that is a cause. But what else? Yeah. What, is, um, what else do you think? Um, uh, you know, God, you know, I, I think it's because of fear of the uh, religion and, and how they pronounce their... Christians are very forgiving. We are taught to forgive. 
Whereas the Muslim, like you said, cut, straight, done. You know, it's just, it's a scary thing to deal with a person. So are you saying like because Christians, what I would call easy prey, because yeah. they're not going to fight back. Exactly. But yet Muslims, if you, des de uh, if you des not desecrate, that's mm -hmm. what I was looking for. If you desecrate the Quran, we know what happened with the Prophet Muhammad right. back when, you know, with the, uh, the, the comic strip type thing. Mm -hmm. So if you desecrate their word, mm -hmm. you know, then there's a lot of um, price to pay on that. Right. But if you desecrate the Bible, it seems like we're forgiving type things. Right. So are you thinking that that fear of retribution is the reason why they persecute Christians I, on this subject? I, I actually do. Uh, we've been in uh, fighting the Taliban in Afghanistan for over 18 years. That's correct. When people are fanatical and they actually... If, put it like this, and I, I, always, I always use this analogy when I'm talking to people. If Christians were as fanatical and dedicated to their faith as Muslims are... I think we'd have a different outcome on the, how the, the, earl, the world is portraying itself. Well, I agree, because, you know, we're talking about calculating the cost. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, a lot of these um, freedom fighters, Muslim freedom mm -hmm. fighters type thing, Taliban, all that, you know, they have no problem in dying right. for their faith. Exactly. Christians are a little bit different. Now, there's a lot of missionary Christians that would die for their faith. Mm -hmm. I'm not yeah. labeling every Take Christian, but the majority of Christians would probably not. So you're mm -hmm. right. There's a lot more commitment in yeah. that faith than there is yeah. probably in the Christian faith. But still, I'm talking about lawmakers in this country. I'm talking about special interest groups in this country. They will literally, absolutely persecute Christians on their stance mm -hmm. on homosexuality. And they will, like you said, bow down mm -hmm. to the way uh, the Muslims uh, feel. And they're a lot stronger. Well, you know, mm -hmm. they say that in the Bible, the Old Testament, um, oh, the homosexuality, they should be stoned. You know, the, the, the New Testament, basically, Jesus, basically, mm -hmm. is the law and the prophets. And Jesus said, basically, that we need to forgive all sins. Exactly. And we must, must not judge. And, you know, I would say a majority of Christians, I would say major, almost all born-again believers, believe that homosexuality is a sin, but, not you know, the sinner needs to be forgiven. So, the fact that we have that stance in comparison to the Muslim religion, is that the reason, in your mind, that's why we get pursued and they don't. Well, I, I, I think that that's a big part of it, but it's also um, we're for sale. I mean, you got this, uh, you know, uh, Jewish lobby. Mm -hmm. We don't say anything against Israel when we don't need to say anything. Now, when Muslims come over to this country in particular, you, gotta, you guys got to remember, they don't have any rights in their country because they're ruled by a kingdom. Mm -hmm. So their medical is taken care of, whatever it is. So they come over here with a, the ones that can come, come over here with a vast amount of money. When you mm -hmm. have a vast amount of money, you have a vast amount of influence. Sure. And that is why a lot of these politicians cater bow down and cater to these guys because these are the guys that are contributing to their campaigns. You know, the Jews do it, the, the Jewish lobby. They, and, and that's why nothing is really like done to really make a stance mm -hmm. against certain things coming in here. And in the Muslim world, and I was in, in uh, the Middle East for a significant amount of time. Yeah, you were. Um, it's a form of weakness. So they have no respect because, again, Christians are very forgiving. We're very, it, it's, the Christian re religion is, 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 is viewed kind of weakly. Mm -hmm. You know, you can do anything you want to this person and they're just going to bow. And they're just going to forgive you. They're just going to forgive you. you know? yeah. it, it's almost disarming. So they take advantage of, our, of, of, the, of, the, of the teachings of yes. Christ based on this world. Yes, absolutely. And the Muslims, they don't care. They'll just, you know, right. if, they, I, if you go against their Quran, right. I mean, I mean, I mean, I, I, I mean, think about it. We were so-called uh, attacked in 9-11, and yet there is no le legislation to stop uh, Islamic uh, people coming to this country, opening a business. I'm not saying, you know, we need to discriminate against them, but when you're attacked in a warlike, so-called warlike situation, you're supposed to take some kind of action to figure out what's going on and how it's going on. The Japanese were interned during World War II, innocent American citizens, legal citizens. Right. And that's how we're viewed, and we're still letting these people in here, and our, our politicians aren't doing anything about it. You know, I, I think there's a lot of truth in that, and I think one of the things that we need to realize, you know, basically, and what this show's promoting is the fact that, yes, tolerance is, 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 an, is an acceptable form of living for us, because we are not here to judge Right. people. That's not Absolutely. our job. We have, a, we have a complete and true and real and righteous judge in Christ, so we don't need to do that. But I, again, I, I just think, and I just, it's just things to ponder for our audience, the idea that, you know, real clear, we do not, we do not um, condemn the homosexual, homosexual individual. Mm -hmm. We condemn the sin like we would condemn any other sin mm -hmm. that's called out in the Amen. Bible. We're going to be talking about a number of sins, again, sexually related sins uh, next week. 
But I'll tell I, if you have any thoughts or any questions or any comments, I love your comments. Some of them are not so nice and some of them are, and that's okay. That's the whole idea because everybody yes. has an idea, point of view, mm -hmm. but the bottom line is still the same. The Bible is our guide. Mm -hmm. The Bible is our, our, our blueprint for life. So whatever the Bible says rules. It doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter what anybody thinks. It matters what God thinks, Thanks. and that's what we get from the Bible. So we will end this, uh, this conversation on homosexuality. I hope it really opened up your eyes to understanding God's view of this sin, uh, not only in the uh, days of Lot, but in 2019, nothing has changed. Remember I told you a long time ago, you know, the world is not that much different from the days of Abraham and Lot. We're all built the same. And we've built, built the same for 6,000 years. So we need to understand that it's okay. It's okay that uh, we consider homosexuality a sin as long as we don't condemn the individual. Sinner. And all we do is that we, um, we pray for them to get a, to repeat, uh, repent from that sin. Amen. Amen. Um, I don't know if you've been uh, checking out. I've been promoting uh, uh, Pastor uh, uh, Don Meinberg, author. Oh, know? awesome. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're starting a new uh, campaign there called Ask the Pastor. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be sending out excerpts of the books and uh, people's questions that they have for uh, for me in regards to their uh, middle school or high school, young high school kid that's struggling with certain issues. Most of them have, have geared around peer pressure. Uh, some of them, uh, I've got a couple of questions on being on fitting in, fitting in into a new school or going to a new school from an elementary school. I really want your questions because the idea, this book uh, deals with 365 issues, but you may only have one and you may only want, uh, you only have one specific question that you need answered and that's what we're there for. So all you need to do is go to my website, www.reachingnewheightsbooks.com. Scroll down to the Ask the Pastor section and just send me an email. It's confidential. No one will know about it. Your name will never be published. And let me see And let me see if, there's, if the books can help you and help your youth in whatever situation they're going through. And again, like Donovan says, my Facebook page is Don Meinberg Author. It's the name of the Facebook page. I pro I'm promoting the books there, but I'm also giving you vital uh, information and, and, some, and some insight from what the book is all about and topics that we discuss Hopefully that it will be a blessing uh, to you and your and your young ones. So, anyways, yeah, please check it out. Don Meinberg, author. It's a it's a really a great book. It's and like I said, you know, a lot of people say, well, I don't have a middle school uh, child. I don't have a young high school child. Yeah, but you know somebody that does. Everybody does. You got family members. You got friends. You got uh, acquaintances, work coworkers. Everybody knows somebody that has a, a young teen that's struggling. This book is for everybody. It's not just for Christians. It's for everybody, but it does give a biblical insight to answers exactly. uh, to those issues. Exactly, exactly. And also, uh, uh, real quick, if uh, it's, it's kind of cold out there, and um, I've been telling people, you know, you got animals, just because the animal has fur on it does not necessarily mean the animal does not get cold. So if you find a stray animal that seems like they're, they're, they're finding a lot of uh, frozen animals. Yeah. I noticed that uh, Bell is uh, well dressed yes, here today. Yes, he's, yes, yeah, I got to take care of Bell. Yeah, yeah so. he's well dressed, looks nice and warm and stuff. Absolutely, we not only have to take care of our animals who's out there, um, you know, struggling in the cold. We have to take care of the homeless too. Yeah, the people. You know, a lot of homeless people that are still um, living on the streets in the 30, 25, 30 degree weather. Not only we need to pray for them, but we also give tangible help. Tangible. You know, coats, jackets, mittens, socks, things that can be a blessing for these mm -hmm. folks that are that are still living in the streets. Never stop praying, but also tangible help. Tangible. There's a lot of organizations out here, especially in the Inland Empire, that we can help these uh, folks in need. So, And if you don't know, if you got a ton of stuff you want to give away and you don't know where to give it, <laughs> text me, email me, contact me, message me. I've got a number of organizations that we support for the homeless to help those in need. So just let me know, and I will definitely get those uh, your, your stuff or whatever you have to provide to the right people. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and in, in regards, of, as we close real quick, um, is there anything that we should be focusing on for the rest of the week? I think what we need to be focusing on this week is, um, I think, I think that one of the, the, one of the things that we're hearing a lot is, you know, I, I want you all to pray about smart government decisions. I'm not a politics show, but I, I am sensitive to the government shutdown, mm -hmm. and I know that that vote's coming up at the end of this, um, Thursday. Thursday. at the end of this uh, Friday the 15th. Mm -hmm. So uh, I just pray that better heads prevail, 
that a deal can be made and people can be blessed. Also, I want to wish every single person out there a happy Valentine's happy Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Exactly. Yeah. You, know, you know, don't forget the Lord, too. No one will love you more than Jesus Christ. Amen. So, again, give a thanks out and praise the Lord for everything that he's done for us. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful week. And thank you for joining me in the Pastor Don Show. See you guys again next week. Peace.